Bye. And welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you have been warned. Because here I come in three, look, look, two, look, look, one. Bye. And welcome, everyone. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. My name is Shamari Clark. You're watching the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Look, look. And we have a great show for you today. Oh, do we ever? Do we ever have a great show for you today? So I'm going to tell you the stories, and then I have an announcement. So first of all, VeChain is going to enter the, def the, million, the billion dollar DeFi market. Do they ever quit? Do they ever quit? Look, look. VeChain. It's monstrous. It grows. Its appetite is insatiable. Its thirst for power is unquenchable. <laughs> oh, baby. So here comes VeChain to enter the... A billion dollar DeFi market with VeChain 2.0 or something like this. Look, 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 we're going to read that. And then I promised you I'd read you about the IOTA thing. Um, so like I said, it's not IOTA saying we're going to be a standard. It's other people, analysts saying, hey, this shit's going to be the standard. Right? It's not some Twitter army. I'm a ripple army of fucking morons. No, it's professionals. So we're going to read about IOTA to become a global standard. Possibly, possibly. Well, he says the global standard. I say a global standard. Uh, I like to hedge my bets right there. And then finally, Bitcoin hedge funds, demand is booming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes the money. Bye. Here comes the institutional investments. Investor money. Told you. Look, look, we've been waiting for. And here they come. So look, let's proceed. How we proceed. Uh oh, the announcement. Right, right. So look, guys, we started a new chat room on Twitter. And so, you know, a lot of you guys, you just chat with me privately, right? Which is fine. I like that. You know, you send me articles or just whatever the fuck. You just talk to me and stuff. And so, ask me questions and shit or just whatever. And so, that's cool and that's amazing. And so, but we also have a, so, but now we have a channel in on Twitter, okay? And so, if you want to be on it, just tweet me, you know, say, you know, add me to the channel. It's called Look, Look, Bang. That's the name of the channel. <laughs> and so how the channel works is it's just a channel for the crypto blockchain news nation. Right? So it's not like me sitting there and I'm answering questions or something. Like, no, it's just a place where all of you can go, you know, and talk to each other, you know, and me, but and each other, right? So if you go there, well, get signed up. You'll see me and how me and the brothers talk, like, you can talk about whatever you want, right? Anything. It doesn't have to just be crypto. I mean, talk about weed, gardening. I don't care. Whatever you want. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, make friends and stuff like that. And so if you want to be in the, in the, um, on that channel, then just go to, oh, where is it? CB Newswire. Hold on. Let me use this camera. CB Newswire. At CB Newswire on Twitter. And just private text me, private tweet me, hey, Shamari, you know, put me on the thing or just add me or just put whatever, you know, add me, whatever. I know what that means. I know what you're doing. And so, and then I'll add you. And that's it. Then you can come chit chat and stuff like that. No religion, no politics. That's the only thing. Like one MAGA hat and bang, you're out of there. Also, no racist, sexist, any kind of bullshit, homophobic kind of crap like that. One kind of talk like that. Bang, you're out of there. Like no warning. Okay, no ignorant fucks. I don't like any ignorant fuck sticks. So any of that, bang, you're just gone. But other than that, I mean, literally, you could, I don't care. On the other chat, we have another private chat on Twitter, but it's just for me and a couple other guys. Man, these guys have pictures of their weed and shit. And <laughs> yeah, they talk about all sorts of stuff. So like I said, man, make friends and talk about whatever you want. Right? It doesn't only have to be crypto, crypto, crypto. But it usually is, but, you know, you know, guys asking each other, what do you think about this coin, that coin, this, whatever, you know? So think of it like a clubhouse, and it's the Cryptocurrency Blockchain News Nation Clubhouse. You're a member of the nation? Well, you get to enter the clubhouse. You know, it's like the Freemasons. You're part of the team, you get to go into the, the lodge, right? And so that's our lodge, and, uh, uh, and that's it. And so come hang out, do whatever you want, all right? And so, and then the other thing I want to tell you, though, is, like I said, I'm not sitting there looking at it all day, you know, waiting for someone to ask me something. So you might ask me a question or something, and 
you know, maybe I don't answer for eight hours or maybe not at all. Maybe I just didn't see it. You know, it's not, it's a clubhouse. It's not some direct link to Shamari. If you want me to answer a direct question each and every time you ask me, then do it privately. That's more of a clubhouse for everybody to interact, hang out, you know, together. All right. Great. So let's begin how we begin, brothers. Bye. <laughs> look, look. Let's get out over here. Bye. Why is Coin Microcap always doing this? Look, let's do a little refresh. Right, let me get some sips, some beverages. Look, look. All right. Still creeping up a little bit more. All right. Where did we start? Hold on. Let me let me hold on. Let me get a sip and then we'll do some. I want to see where we started the year at. Wait, right, weren't we in the low sevens? All right, let me take a look. One second, guys. Let me see something. All right, on the first of the year, we were at 7163. Right, we were at low sevens. All right, so we've gone up. You now let's almost, let's just call it, you know, almost two grand. 1,800 around there. All right, all right. Okay, so I just wanted to see that. So the Bitcoin's been up about 1,800 since the beginning of the year. Oh, it's the 18th. So basically 100 bucks a day for the past 18 days, <laughs> if you do the math, right? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. I just wanted to see where we started and where we're at here. Okay, so we've been up. We're up almost two Gs. All right, good to know. Yes, that's why I keep notes. Look, look, brothers, I showed you my trade journal. Okay, you want to be a professional investor? Yeah, you better learn how to take some notes, homeboy. Refresh your memory about certain events. Look. All right. More than that. All right. Oh, so sorry. Bitcoin. <laughs> All right. Bitcoin's at $8,902. And when I left you yesterday, it was at $8,854. So what is that? A $40, $42. What is that? No, more than that. $62. Anyway, about 50 bucks, man. It's up about 50 bucks. <laughs> All right. It's good enough. Look, look. Oh, let me get a sip. Yeah. Oh, this IOTA story. Wait till you see this. You see, and that's the beauty. That's what I love. Like, a lot of you guys are always showing me, Shamori, look at this coin. Look at that coin. And then I'm like, all right, send me a URL. And he sent me to some company website or some company media Pay, medium, medium, that, that, that site, medium page. Motherfucker, I don't read that shit. That's corporate shit. Of course, the corporation's telling you that. I like to hear it from third parties. Right? That's why I always ask you for a URL. I want to hear, well, Shamari, you know, a lot of you guys pretty much are bullshitting me. I can tell. Yeah, Shamari, it's, it's doing a lot of stuff. And I'm like, really? Well, give me a URL. Oh, no URL shows up. You know, it's a bunch of bullshit. Like, third party, third party perception. That's what matters. And so that's the beauty of this IOTA story. But let's just get to it. Look, look, top 10 today, brothers. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Tether, Litecoin, EOS, Binance Coin, and look, look, Stellar taking over the number 10. And we got market moves today. Single digits up, single digits down. Oops, where's my mouse? There we go. Single digits up. Oh, man, I really locked that tight. Single digits up to single digits down. Who's that? Oh, Stellar did that. Look at Stellar making all these moves. I said I was going to juggle it next month. <laughs> Might fuck around and make me keep it. We'll see. We'll see. I doubt it, though, but we'll see. Well, I said I'm only selling half, so I mean. Oh, single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down, too. Single digits up, too. Single digits down. All right, let's look who lost money today. Biggest losers today. If you see anything on here you like, you go get it because it is on sale. Top 10, loser of the day. Bitcoin SV, Dash, Augur, Energy. I exit RLC, Ethereum Classic, Silverway, Bitcoin Gold, FTX Token. Oh, and Cosmos. Let's look who made money today, brothers and sisters.
Yes. Look, Luke, top 10 gainers of the day. Steam, Swipe, Zcoin, Stellar, Divix, DAO, Zcash, Nash Exchange, Omus Go, Bitcoin Cash, and Rift Token. Let's see what told Mark Cap today is. So Mark Cap is 244.6 billion. 244.6 billion. And when I left you yesterday, we we're at 243 even. So we've gone up 1.6 billion in total market cap. And it took a 24 hour volume. Oh, nice. Still above. Holy, even went up a little bit. I'm surprised about that because we're going into the weekend. I thought volumes would be a little bit down. You know, people usually take a break on the weekend. Wow, professional traders, I guess. We're not with a bunch of professional traders. Anyways, 24 hour volume, 129.8. And when I left you yesterday, we're at 127.6. So we've gone up 2.2 billion dollars in total market. Oh, sorry, 24 hour volume. Yes. Look, look. Going up is good. Hold on a second. All right. All right. What are we dealing with? Yeah. So the first story of the day. Bang. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look, look, brothers. And I'll tell you right now, you know what I read? I read something that VeChain's talking about doing some remittance crap. Yeah, man. But it was just a little sentence, so I didn't want to read that because it was just, you know, I don't, it wasn't a full story. If I hear a, write a story about it, then we'll read about it. But it was like a little, yeah, they're also thinking of blah, 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 you know, but mm, you know these crypto sites, they're not so accurate sometimes, so I didn't want to read something without, you know, big verification. But here it is. VeChain will enter billion dollar DeFi market with VeChain 2.0. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. VeChain's lust for power is insatiable. Look, look. It's lust for world domination knows no bounds. <laughs> you have a use case? We will take that use case, bitch. Bye. Look, look. Holy. Oh, yeah, you could just do anything with this thing, this blockchain dag on it. Actually, what was interesting, I read uh, I read this thing uh, um, by Sonny Lou the other day. He had this interview. He's the CEO of VeChain. I finally figured out who the, who the CEO was. And what he said was, what the power of VeChain is, is that it's a blockchain, but you can tailor each. So each deal these guys, VeChain makes with the company is tailored to a special business model. Yeah, so, you know, most blockchains are like, well, this is what we have. Would you like to use this, this, this like that? VeChain goes in and goes, well, we have a blockchain. What's your business? All right, well, let's create a whole business model around what we're going to do for you. Yeah, so if we're going to track, track, uh, you know, track the food, yeah, we'll create a business model. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So that's what, now I understand how they're becoming so powerful. It's because VeChain is VeChain. And the blockchain is the blockchain, but what they do with each individual company is different. Yeah, the way they structure it, it it's different. Yeah. Um, and that's what Sonny Lou said he learned from, he said he learned it from Vitalik Buterin, the co-creator co of Ethereum. He said he met him one day in 2013 and Vitalik Buterin was telling him about blockchain. But he said what excited him about blockchain was Vitalik was telling him, yeah, you can tailor make on the fly business models. And that got in his head. And that's what made him create VeChain, the VeChain blockchain, is that each time he does a deal, it's actually a different business model. It's not just, oh, they're using VeChain now. But each deal is between VeChain and that company. And there's a whole model around it. Ah, I'm not good at that. You know, I don't know much about. About. Uh modeling and stuff like that but yeah yeah so that's it was interesting and so now it's occurring to me like now that i see all the different industries that vchain is getting into and all the different use cases now i get it i think sunny lou basically thinks well this blockchain can do anything <laughs> and so we're gonna get into everything yeah you should read that uh or, or watch the video sunny lou um yeah it was just like 
I think it was this week, maybe like Monday or something, or it could have been on the weekend, last weekend. And that's what he says. He said, Vitalik Buterin, uh, once, once Vitalik told him about, yeah, you can actually do different business models all the time. That's what made him start VeChain. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so look. DeFi, 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 holy. That's all I've been hearing about lately. All right. Yes, DeFi, DeFi, DeFi. Actually, the big thing is now is DeFi and what are the tax implications? <laughs> Don't forget the tax, man. Look, look. All right, brothers, let's move on. Sonny Lou. The CEO of VeChain spoke in an interview with Nuggets News about the implementation of the decentralized financial economy for the VeChain Thor 2.0 blockchain. Decentralized finance, DeFi. Lou said that details will be revealed when the VeChain 2.0 white paper is published. <clears throat> VeChain's evolution to decentralized finance. VeChain is a project that is specialized in offering blockchain technology solutions for various industries. Tag on all the industries. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they won't be satisfied until they've consumed them all. <laughs> yes, brother. That's why you better be invested. Is look, look. When these analysts, and I'm telling you, the analysts have already looked. You know what they're coming for. You know what they're coming for. And look, look, your hodlings. Bang, 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 brothers. Look. VeChain is a project that is specialized in offering blockchain technology solutions for various industries. The partners are among the heavyweights of the industry. And that's the, that's the beauty. Yeah, VeChain doesn't bottom feed. Yeah, they deal with the top of each industry. And come from the food, pharmaceutical, logistics, and automotive sectors, sectors among others. Ugh. Can't list them all. It would take 20 minutes to read that. Most recently, for example, the company has entered into a partnership with Chinese Anhui Tea Association. Oh, we read this. Uh, the, the, sea, the, the tea cultivation in China. Yeah, she know how important tea is in China. Boys don't fuck around when it comes to tea. Look, look, Sonny Lu said, the company has, been, has seen significant growth and is well on track to integrate decentralized financial applications that can serve as security for interchain protocols. Okay. Lu explained the following. The, v, the VET token will be used in a different way, more representing the valuation of assets for open finance applications. In the upcoming, so kind of like a, because it represents, all right, let me just read. In the upcoming white paper 2.0, we have a dedicated section to elaborate on open finance applications. Yes, we have a dedicated section. We plan to dominate that market. Yes, ferociously. Look, look, brothers. VeChain says they will, and they do. Unlike some projects out here, where well, they live up to the hype. Oh, they live up to the hype. And then some. Daggone, and then some. When I saw this DeFi thing today, I was like, get the fuck out of here. I was like, I can't wait to tell these motherfuckers, man. You see what I'm saying, though? Everything. It's too good, guys. It's too good. In addition, he explained that the demand for DeFi applications on the VeChain Thor blockchain has grown significantly, which is why the company is considering using these applications. Lou acknowledged that infrastructure development and a solid integration arrangement will take time. So it's going to take time. This ain't launching tomorrow. But was optimistic about the potential of DeFi for the VeChain Thor blockchain. Yes. So 2018, for six months, we had roughly half a million transactions total. In 2019, roughly more than 35 million. And look, look, and 80% of them coming from smart contract transactions. I think it's the right time. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the smart contracts is that DeFi. DeFi uses smart contracts, right? Right? Because I uh, Ethereum is supposed to be the big DeFi thing, right? A lot of these DeFi guys are on the Ethereum network, right, for the smart contracts. And so I think that's what he's saying here. He's saying, well, look, in 2018, we had half a million transactions. Shit. Then we, we, we went, <laughs> we murdered that with 35 million. And 80% 80 were, 80 were coming from the smart contract, so ah, why don't we DeFi this place up? Look, look. So, progress of the ecosystem, according to Sunny Lou. 
So in the same interview, VeChain CEO spoke about the progress that the crypto ecosystem has made. He stated that the development has been positive, but that it is still in a state similar to the beginning of the internet. That's what I told you guys. That's what I told you. Look, brothers. That, that's why we're positioning ourselves now. Imagine knowing, if you had known the dot-com bubble was going to happen, you would have bought Microsoft and all that way before it even started, right? Well, that's what's happening here. There's going to be a blockchain bubble, and it, we're already in it, right? You're already in it. it. It's like I told you, if you're my age, you remember the dot-com bubble. A frenzy, just a rip-roaring frenzy of money being made. Many, 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 many new millionaires were created during the dot-com bubble. They had a term for it called nouveau reach. Yeah, the new rich. <laughs> yeah, fucking 20-year-old kid bought Microsoft. Bah, he was rich. Nouveau rich, the new rich. And uh, that's what's going to happen here. And I agree. The same as the internet. No one knew about the internet. No one... First of all, it wasn't called the internet. It was called the information superhighway. And nobody knew about it or, you know, anything. But once it started rolling, you know, when people started making money with it, with the companies that were in it, that were participating, that were building it, boom, 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 it just grew. And now we have this thing called the internet. But back when I was a kid, it was called the information superhighway, right? Nobody knew what it was. No, what is it? What is it? What does it do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's how blockchain is going to be. He added that projects such as Ethereum with great development. Holy, I just have rogue nose hairs all over the place. Oh, my gosh. He added that projects such as Ethereum with great development are not yet ready for mass adoption and that they must work on their governance and business model. Right? He's all about this business model, man. When I what? Hold on. Watch. Watch this. From my point of view, Ethereum is working. It can do something. But if you want to reach a new stage and achieve mass adoption as a product, it's not there yet. So, and then he talks about, and then here's the VeChain price. And so here's the full interview. That must be Sunny Lou, I'm assuming. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you want to watch the interview, it's right here. You guys know that I put the links to these um, articles in the description of the video, of every single video. So... Every single article I read you, the links are right there. Just copy and paste it into your, your navigation bar on your browser, and bang, there you are. You'll be reading exactly what we were reading on the show. All right, and so here's the interview. Uh, yeah, there it is. This isn't the interview where he talked about Vitalik Buterin, but this is another one, but um, that other Vitalik one is out there too. Hmm, I should have maybe. Hmm. Anyways, though, bang, yes, the behemoth. We are watching the rise of a behemoth. Like in back in the olden days, right? No one knew how big Microsoft would be, right? No one knew, right? Just, ah, that's this cute little computer software company, right? And it became a monster. <laughs> I told you how Bill Gates used to behave. He destroyed more companies, man. Holy, you guys don't know. Granddaddy Gates used to be a ruthless killer. Killer. All right, let's not get into Bill Gates. And that's why I respect that motherfucker right there, though. <laughs> that's why he's got his Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation doing nice for the African kids and everything. Because he feels so guilty for what he did to all the Americans that he crushed. No, he crushed. He would crush. <laughs> all right, so, though, the V-Chain, that's, that's what it's like. Yeah, uh, V-Chain is going to be the Microsoft of this space. And the next story I'm going to read you, the next company, IOTA, that'll be the Apple. You know, that's what I think. I think these are going to be, those are going to end up, VeChain and IOTA are going to end up being the powerhouses of uh, the, the crypto blockchain space. The, uh, let me put it this way, the tokenized blockchain space, right? Many blockchains are out there. You don't have to have tokens. These are tokenized blockchain services providers. And I think VeChain and IOTA will be the number one, your Microsoft, and the number two, your Apple. You can pick which one you think is going to be bigger. I think VeChain will be the bigger one. The Microsoft, personally. But they will be the Microsoft and Apple of the space. And then everyone else comes down below that. You know what I'm saying? You guys get the feeling? All right. So look, look, VeChain hodlers. Uh, which I am a major one. Yes. The world domination continues. <laughs> the march to world domination progresses. 
nicely, nicely, smartly. Look, look, brothers. Let's see who else is dominating. Bong! Look, look, look. Fun strat report. Right, this is an IOTA talking. This is an IOTA army. Some fucking people on Twitter, little worker bees, all hyped up about some shit that they got sunshine blown up their ass. No. No. This is a real analysis from a real analyst. Well, an analysis company, actually, even better. All right, not just one guy, not like just Novogratz. <laughs> Though, you know, we like Novogratz, but he's a wild man. No, no, this is real proper analysis. Yeah, and these are the things that analysts look, look at, right? Like I told you when I did my portfolio, right? I'm, I've been doing, I've been trading and everything for 20 years, right? I'm an analyst, pretty much. I don't need to read other people's analysis. Just show me the numbers. I'll tell you what's going on. And, uh, you know, that's what these guys are rocking and rolling. Right now, hedge funds, major institutions, major banksters, and everyone in between, fund managers, asset managers, Ah, uh, what else we got? Uh, uh, just all of them. All of them, all the players in the market are all looking at this space. Well, not all of them, but there are many looking at this space. In other words, those sectors are looking at this space. That's how I should say it. Not every fund manager is looking at this space, but many are. And yeah, while well, they have analysts, I've said this a gazillion time. Yeah, and analysts, well, they analyze, right? These guys aren't coming here and just guessing. Well, that sounds like a cute little neat project. Let's try that out. Fuck no. Fuck no. They have their clients' money there. They're investing. Not allowed to do that. Well, I mean, you could do that, but your reputation would be shit when you when those things don't pan out. And so they have analysts. Well, they tell them what are the, what are the, are the best projects in the space. Well, what are the two best? Bang. Obviously, duh. And Bang. And so what's beautiful about this report, like I said, this isn't IOTA saying this. This is another company saying it. Right, these are outside people. And you should see, I'm gonna show you a chart. The scientists that are looking into IOTA. Oh yeah. Oh yes, fuck sticks, I got you tonight. Look, look, fuck sticks. Look here, brothers and sisters. Right, that's what matters. You know, LeBron saying, I'm the best in the world. That's one thing. But when everyone else acknowledges, yo, dog, you are the best, doesn't that hold more weight? Right? So there's like Ripple, right? The Ripple Army, this is the best in the world. No banks on it. And then you got IOTA, doesn't say anything, but everyone else in the world is saying, yo, dog, you're the best, you're the best. Right? And IOTA's like, all right, man, thanks, man. Th uh, all right, you know, like that. Nice and humble, just, all right, just doing what I do. You know? Just get, get, getting her done. <laughs> just getting her done. Look, look, around these parts, we're just getting her done. No, I mean, ain't nothing special. I'm glad y'all think it is, but we're just getting her done. It's how we do around these parts. And so that's what I love. That's what you should all love is whenever you hear third-party people praising the thing that you're invested in. Do you understand? Listening to the, 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 the company itself praise themselves, <laughs> that's bullshit. Or hearing the company's uh, partners, you know, they've had partnerships, you know, like, like again, Ripple, MoneyGram praising Ripple. Yeah, well, Ripple paid you to say that. You know, I want to hear an analyst outside. I want to hear JP Morgan analysts say, blah, 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 blah. Right? I want to hear BlackRock analysts say, blah, 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 blah. I want to hear Fidelity analysts say, blah, 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 not you. Right? It's like me. I say, oh, the greatest in the multiverse. Well, fuck, is it? No. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. But I'm just saying, if it wasn't, <laughs> if it wasn't the greatest, it is the greatest in the multiverse. <laughs> but if it wasn't, all right, seriously, though, but you get what I'm saying? Third party people talking about your project. That's what matters. Not the company blowing sunshine up your ass, praising themselves or the partners praising themselves. All right, so let's get it on. Oh, okay, so Fundstrat report. Yes. And Fundstrat, these guys are a bunch of Bitcoin maximalists, actually. So Fundstrat report, IOTA becomes global industry standard and reaches price of 143 bucks. I, I, like I said, I don't do price. One of you boys, he asked me, one of the brothers the other day, he asked me, Shamori, do a price prediction thing. I don't do price predictions here. 
That's bullshit. For what? I don't know what the price of something's going to be. I know you'd like me to tell you because you'd like to have some sort of hope in your heart and all this kind of thing. And I know. I get it. I get it. But nobody knows what this stuff's going to be. So I don't do price predictions. But what I do is in my portfolio, I have what's called price targets. As a trader, you guys know I'm a Forex trader. If you go to forexfactory.com, look at my trades, right? You see there's price target one, price target two, price target three. So, yeah, well, maybe it doesn't even reach price target one. Maybe it reaches price target two, but only way, only halfway to, uh, sorry, maybe it reaches price target one, but only halfway to price target two. Or maybe the move is so strong, just look, look, we just bang, go all the way to price target three. So as a trader, a professional trader, I have what's called price targets. You know, I don't know what the end result is going to be because, well, these companies are going to be here forever, right? If you told people when I was a kid that Microsoft shares would be at, you know, whatever they are now, right? People would probably have been like, well, you know, they wouldn't probably maybe believe it because computers weren't a big deal back then, right? It was just kind of like, you think this thing is going to be worth that or software is going to be worth that and bang, well, it is, isn't it? And so I don't do price targets, but I have, or sorry, I do price targets. I don't have price projections. I know that what I'm going to take, so for instance, my V-Chain, right? My price target is $1. Do I think it's going to go more than that? Of course it is. But what I care about, the way I invest, is that I want my millions when it hits $1. Once it hits $1, bang, I've got bang, 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 millions of money, right? If it's at 50 cents, yeah, I'm still a millionaire, but my target is $1. So I'm not going to touch VeChain. When VeChain goes to 50 cents, bang, I'll be a millionaire already. But I'm not going to touch it till it gets to $1. That's the price target, right? You guys get it? If you go to Forex Factory and look at my trades, you'll see that. You know, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Those red lines in all those charts that I have on Forex Factory, the red lines, that's called a Fibonacci expansion. Those expansions are my price targets. Now, look at how that worked in those trades, right? Some trades went to price target one. Some went to two. Some even went to three. But some just went to one, and that was it, you know? So that's what I have. I, 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 I do my portfolio by price target number one. Do I think VeChain is going to be two, three dollars? Well, I, I don't know about three yet, but two, fucking amazing. Of course it is. But my price target is $1. You, you understand what I'm saying? Once it's at one, all right, mission accomplished. We did it, Shamari. You win. Is it going to go more? Of course it is. Am I going to cash it all out at $1 in one day? Of course not. I'm going to let it ride. But I'm just saying once it's at $1, all right, now we can begin, you know, uh, you know, realizing some of these gains and taking out some of this money. All right, so, holy, I've been preaching. Look, look, that's what you need, brothers. I want you to inside the mind of an investor so you guys think properly, you know, think properly, you know, and be realistic with your price targets, you know. <laughs> yes, $589 Ripple. Yeesh. Well, Ripple lover, did you ever do a little math? Yeah, Google circulating supply by 589, moron. That would make Ripple a $20 trillion company. <laughs> that's that's the GDP of America, moron. That's the, the amount of money of all the goods and services sold in America. $19.7 trillion was our GDP last year. Oh, and you're saying one company is going to be worth basically more than America? Oh, yeah. You were really the smart kids in the room, weren't you? You were the smart ones. <laughs> Do a little math. It doesn't hurt. Look, look, your head is not just for holding your hair. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Use it. It's good. All right, so. Uh, a little preach. A little teach and preach. So, look, look, fun strat report. Iota becomes global industry standard and reaches $143. Are you going to get to the fucking story, man? All right, brothers. I know. Look, look, brothers. Uh, I'm already awake. What is it? Eight in the morning? I'm going to get my drink on. Look, look. Well, you know, for me, this is usually my lunchtime. I'm a Forex trader, so. <laughs> but, yeah, so let's begin. So the research company. Research company. Not a ripple army. 
Not an iota army. Not some Twitter army. Not some fucking worker bees crazed out on Twitter, hopped up on hopium. Oh, yeah, that hopium. Oh, that's that good shit. That's that good shit. Make you believe some shit product is going to come out of work. Oh, that's that good shit right there. <laughs> Edwin, he's one of the brothers. He always talks about hopium. So I took that word from him, really. I never heard about that before until he said it. Uh, that hopium will get you invested in shit you shouldn't be invested in. Doing shit you shouldn't be doing. Uh, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but look, look, there's no need for hopium because we have a research company, Funstrat. To which also the well-known Bitcoin bull Tom Lee belongs to, has published a new report that IOTA believes has great potential. Oh yeah, fuck sticks. Analyst report. Professional analyst report. Not Shamari talking, though I am an analyst. While I'm at that level, people want to pay me to analyze shit. I told you about that. They want to pay me to do their fucking little reports for them. Consult. You be a consultant, Shamari. <laughs> I got guys. Oh, man, I can tell you. I got guys they wanted me to be a consultant, and they want to shop me around to all the little, the little, uh, little, like, family mom and pop hedge funds and shit around here. Oh, yeah, here in South Beach. Yeah, I got guys that are like, look, man, I'll go do the legwork for you. All you got to do is write the report, Shamari. Just write the report, Shamari. <laughs> we'll make money, dog. We'll make money. Holy. So, look, look. I don't want to write reports. According to the report, <laughs> but according to their report, the chances of success for cryptocurrency developed in Germany are good. But, according to the report, IOTA could become the global standard. <laughs> IOTA could become the global standard for machine-to-machine -machine payments within the next 10 years. I told you Microsoft, Microsoft and Fujitsu already already made patents in uh in japan for uh iota to be in all the fujitsu iot stuff um yeah yeah uh watch you'll see hold on according to the study well you're not going to see about that i'm just telling you about that that's not in the story but i'm just telling you that happened that was back in 2018 that happened according to a study by mckinsey the internet of things market has the potential to increase in value by more than 17 trillion by 2025 exactly look i told you guys when i came to the space i thought well what's the future well i know the future is smart cities internet of things yeah well you know how many devices are going to be used for that like tr trillions <laughs> Right, if you if you smart city up every major city on Earth, which will probably eventually get there. I mean, years down the road, fuck sticks. I mean, you know, that's like your children are gonna see those days. You know, when you know the local stop sign will say, "Oh, hi, Mister Clark, please stop. Here comes some traffic." Like he'll probably talk to you and shit. But anyways, yeah, Internet of Things, seventeen trillion dollars. Almost forty percent of this accounted for of oh, this is accounted for by interoperability between machines and sensors i told you i told you guys that's what iota does man we read that we read the we read the story about iota in a garbage can this is going to sound silly but b follow me here there's a city in i think it was sweden or switzerland i think it started with an s over there in europe so sweden or switzerland and they use iota in their garbage cans like the city gives out garbage cans to the citizens. Yeah. And the garbage can tells the owner when it's full. The garbage can tells the city when it's full so that the city can send garbage men to come pick it up. And then the garbage can also tells the city when it was picked up and thrown out. So the city can keep track of the workers that they actually you know, went and threw out the garbage. And also it devises, well, we know this neighborhood their garbage is usually ready on Wednesday. All right, we'll send garbage guys there on a Wednesday. This neighborhood Thursday. So it, it helps streamline, you know, sanitation in the in the city, right? Your city sanitation department and stuff. And yeah, that's just one garbage can. Well, well sorry. It, 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 well, it's, I don't know how big the city is, but it's probably hundreds of thousands of garbage cans, but just one application. 
but each of those garbage cans is its own node, right? It's its own sensor, right? And uh, that's why IOTA is amazing because it's infinitely scalable. That's why I told you guys a million times. IOTA makes blockchains look like old clunky pieces of shit. Blockchains are, are hardly scalable, shitty transactions, hackable, 51% attack or whatever you want to do with them, right? And they're not quantum proof. Well, IOTA is the exact opposite of all those things. <laughs> it is infinitely scalable. I'm not saying that to make a point. You can put trillions of nodes and sensors and devices on the IOTA Tango. Perfect. It even works better. It is infinitely scalable. It, 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 the speed, it is almost instant. It's almost instant because the actual machines do some of the calculations and stuff, right? Um, it is secure. Yeah, it's quantum proof. Well, if I'm a city and I want to deploy, I want to, I want to, I'm a, I'm a new, I'm a, I'm a good mayor. I'm a new type of mayor. I'm an innovative mayor. Yeah, I want to give my citizens, bang, the newest shit. Yeah, well, what are you going to deploy? IOTA. It's quantum proof. So not only are you deploying it and it's going to work because it's actually infinitely scalable, but your city will be safe. Hackers can't come and, you know, I don't know, make the, you know, change like, I don't know, some stupid shit like maybe the light's red and change it to green and psh, psh, cause car accidents or some shit. I mean, I don't know if that's how it'll work, but you know what I'm trying to say. They can't mess with your city's infrastructure for your citizens, right? That's IOTA, baby. Makes blockchains look like nothing. Nothing. Uh, where are we at? Okay, so... $17 trillion by 2025. Yeah, that's right around the corner. <laughs> that's five years from now. And, oh, yeah, and that's what I was telling you guys. And remember what I told you guys when I did my, you know, when I was planning out the portfolio? That was one of the things I did, right? Like, okay, well, what's the future? I want to invest in things that don't have competition yet, right? Like, you know, there is no competition for IoT devices. There is no competition for authentication. There is no competition for, um, well, AI in a way, right? And so Singular Net B Chain IOTA, right? There's no competition yet for any of them. And so as they go into the market, they're the first, right? And as they grab all the top of each market, well, they rule that market. Of course, there'll be players down here servicing small and medium-sized enterprises. I've been talking about that lately, the SMEs. But when it comes to the big dog, the big shit, right? It's like IBM, right? IBM services, you know, banks, you know, mega corporations, you know, Boeing, Caterpillar, Ford, you know, mega, mega stuff, you know. Uh, you know, they don't service small and medium. Well, I guess they probably have an arm that does that. But but you see what I'm saying? And that's the beauty. Like when you get into your IOTA, uh, your IOTA and your V-Chain, yeah, they're servicing the top of their industries. The top, not bottom feeding, the top. And so, you know, when these guys get here and see that, yo, that's going to make you some sick-ass money, son. Sick money. Um. Oh, yeah, but I keep trailing off. And so that's what I figured, right? What is the future and what there's no competition in? I think the future is Internet of Things. I think the future of, I think the future is Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and smart cities. And so that's what I kind of, you know, focused on. And then that banking stuff, like I said, with the Stellar and the Ripple thing, but, right? Um, yeah, and so, yeah, they don't have competition yet, right? And so VeChain's running around, you know, just building all this new business in, in new businesses, new industries. There was no such thing as a DeFi industry fucking three years ago. Well, they're about to start. Right? There was no IoT industry before. Well, IOTA is about to rock. Right? There was no authentication from farm to table and blah, blah, blah. Well, VeChain's doing that, right? It's all, it's all this stuff that people want, but that wasn't here yet. So they're the front runners. Do you understand? They're the front runners. Yeah, and the front runners win, right? Apple, Apple and Microsoft came out with operating systems first for the average consumer. So they won that consumer market, right? Because they were the front runners. There were many different operating systems that came out when I was a kid. Many, many. But they all failed. 
<laughs> they all got crushed. And so that's how I came about with IOTA and VeChain is that they are the future. And while well, they're servicing the future, and they're doing it now, before the future has really even properly arrived. You know what I mean? In five years, everyone's going to expect to be able to scan, scan their meat or their vegetables and find out where they came from, right? VeChain does that, right? Uh, five years from now, smart cities are going to be getting built and all that. Yeah, IOTA, VeChain, they do that already. In other words, they're the industry leaders, right? You get it? Does that make sense? And so that's how I chose my portfolio. It was like, what is going to be the future? And and so as you can see from the performance of my portfolio, well, everything's kicking ass, right? Because <laughs> you got to think of it the proper way. All right, look, look. That's a little bragging at the end there. All right. Almost 40% of this potential is accounted for by interoperability between machines and sensors. McKinsey describes that about 99% of all collected sensor data is lost before it reaches the decision makers in the company. Uh, according to the report, the economic value of IOTA Network could grow to USD $700 billion by, 20, by 2035. Now, that's realistic. Yeah, 2035, you know, 15 years down the road, not next year or anything. This is based on, incre on increasing IoT growth until 2025. But remember this, just like the dot-com bubble, yeah, everyone rushed in to anything that had potential for the future. So it drove prices <laughs> crazy, right? It drove uh, the prices for anything that looked even remotely viable <laughs> to the moon as you folks say all right uh this is based on increasing iot growth until 2025 and then stabilizing until 2030 to 35. another prerequisite is that iota becomes the global iot standard only then can these forecasts actually be achieved the following figure illustrates this development and so uh, i really that's the 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 thing that's the uh, flow chart there. Blah, 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 blah. So the report states that IOTA fully supports embedded computing and sensor technology, IOT, and is therefore well prepared for an important target market such as the semiconductor manufacturing market. Obviously, that's what you put in the fucking devices, right? Existing partnerships such as the one with STM Microelectronics, that's the one that's putting IOTA right on the chip, uh, act as an adoption accelerator exactly so if you want to make a sensor uh some sort of sensor you're you're a manufacturer of sensors well you need a a, a, a chip inside your your sensor and they're saying well they're going to be using iota enabled iota chips that'll enable your device to be iota enabled right it's like your computer right there's some sort of chip on there that does the Bluetooth part, right? Every single computer comes with Bluetooth. Every single la uh, phone comes with Bluetooth. Yeah, there's a little chip in there that makes that happen, right? Well, that's going to be the same thing. They're going to be little chips of just IOTA. Your shit's going to be IOTA enabled. Uh, we believe that much of the total silicon wafer growth over the next decade will derive from low power sensor and control type of applications, which aligns with the IOTA's area of focus. Other collaborations, such as those with Jaguar Land Rover, the EDAG Group, and the City Exchange Smart City Program, are helping to develop test environments. Exactly. Oh, that might have been... No, okay. Are helping to develop test environments and proofs of concepts, thus laying the foundation for increasing adoption. Urgh. Another significant fact, according to Fundstrat, is the number of citations in scientific publications. Citations in scientific publications in other words scientists are looking at this and talking amongst themselves about iota has increased significantly and is even at an all-time high the following chart shows this development in detail there it is there it is look at the scientists academic papers analyzing or referencing iota real people not ripple not our, uh twitter armies but Fucking proper scientists, guys who do R and D, guys who are in the you know R and D development centers of universities and corporations, right? 
how can we implement this? How can we, how can we, you know, how, how can we exploit this new technology to our benefit? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, you know? Bang! Look at that rise. Look at the rise. So look, look, brothers. There it is. Bang! Iota. Becomes global standard. Now, I don't know if it's, it will be a global standard. I don't know if it will be the global standard, but, I mean, like I said, they're up, they're, they're the front runners right now. And as long as they keep showing working product, well, people just, all right, we'll just use that. We'll just use that. We'll just use that, right? I used to tell you guys back in 2018, it's a copycat world. Oh, yeah, well, if some city over there sees IOTA as being used in some city. So if I'm a, city, I'm a mayor, yeah, I want some smart city stuff, man. I want to look cool to my citizens. And I want to, you know, I want to bring our city into the future. Yeah, well, I go ask other mayors, hey, what are you using? Oh, yeah, we're using this thing called IOTA. Oh, yeah, fuck shit. It's infinitely scalable. Oh, yeah, it's quantum proof. You won't get hacked. You won't look bad. It'll look bad if the, if the city gets hacked. <laughs> it's the mayor's fault now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? They think of that kind of stuff, too. And so, um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's perfect. IOTA is so perfect for smart cities and stuff like that. Infinitely scalable. So, IOTA the standard. Oh, yeah, baby. Iota the standard. And other people are talking about it being the standard. Not some little army on Twitter. Not the CEO. Not any of those CE guys. But other people. Not only other people, but scientists are looking into it. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them into it. Bye. It's like, daggone, this is too good. Look, look, brothers. Karen, she said her iota, she's getting her iota portfolio. She said she just built a new shelf for her for her iota on, in, in her warehouse. She said, look, look. Well, she called it a bag. She's using that crypto talk. But look, <laughs> Karen, speak like an adult. Yes, you've allocated a shelf in your portfolio for uh, your new iota holdings. Well done. Well done, Karen and the Thomas family. Yes. All right, let's move on. Bye. Yuck. Now let's talk about our money. You know, on Saturdays, I like sending you off to your weekend with money coming for you. Yours, I like to send you off knowing, bang, the tsunami is still on the way. <laughs> Obviously, by now, there's no doubt. Back during the crypto bloodbath of 2018, that's what I would do that for. Every Saturday, I'd make sure to have money stories so guys wouldn't get scared and sell their shit, get all weekend on me and sell their shit on the weekend. <laughs> so I'd be like, you're going to get rich. <laughs> so that by the Tuesday show, we can get back to normal stuff. But look, look, brothers. I mean, I wasn't lying. You are going to, but I'm just saying, you know, I made an extra effort during 2018. Always send these fuck sticks home with some good money talk on the weekend. Don't want them to be afraid. So look, look. Well, I know you guys ain't afraid anymore. You see where this is all going. All right. So look, <laughs> let me get a sip. Oh, Bitcoin Investment Trust says hedge fund demand is booming. Yep. So you guys are chomping at the bits. I want you to have no doubt you are going to be rich. If you're invested in quality product, quality product, quality, it's not product, distributed ledger technology providers, you're going to be loaded. Loaded. I told you yesterday, this market is going to be trillions, trillions of dollars. Well, where do those trillions of dollars go? This is smart money coming. This is smart money coming now. This ain't dumb money. This ain't worker bee money. This is smart money coming. Those trillions are going to be pumped into only things that are working. Only things that are actually making money. Do you understand? And that's why you're going to be rich is because, you know, what do we got here? I, I used to tell you guys this back in 2018. All right? Look at this. There are, what do we got now? Oh, Lee, 5,000 cryptocurrencies. <laughs> back in 2018, I used to show the brothers. Where were we at? We were at like 2,000, I think, around then, around those days. Now there's 5,000 of them. Yeah, just like the dot-com bubble. Uh, yeah, many, many companies. Yeah, only about, I don't know, 200 of them made it. <laughs> only 200 of them are here with us today as real companies, right? The others came later. Uh, but the first wave, huge. there was a culling from the wheat from the chaff. And uh, that's what's going to happen here. And so this initial rush of money... Like I said, hundreds of billions are going to come at first, but it's going to keep piling in, right, till we get to trillions. 
And uh, like one of the brothers, actually, you told me the, uh, yesterday. Actually, yeah, let me read your thing. You were smart. This guy's a smart guy. He always has some smart shit to say. He said, this is Richard. Yes, Richard, brother. He said, I think the global cryptocurrency market surpassed $700 billion in the peak of the 2017-18 bull run. And that was achieved by kids, computer geeks, and crypto enthusiasts who managed to scrape some money together and pump the market. So yes, you are absolutely correct when big money institutional investors, portfolio managers, pension funds, financial advisors, etc., and your average mom and pop start trading crypto ETFs on their Charles Schwab accounts, this market is going to explode. And I guess there's your tsunami. Exactly, that's the tsunami I've been talking to you guys about. Uh, it's definitely going to expand into the trillions of dollars over time. I think it's a no-brainer. And so... Exactly, but I like what he brought. He brought the info. Yeah, this was already a seven hundred billion dollar market, just during the retail the retail uh, bubble that happened in two thousand seventeen eighteen. Yeah, well, fuck. Now we've got an institutional bubble that's about to reach. It's gonna blow that bubble away. <laughs> and not only is it gonna blow the bubble away, but like I said, these analysts, they're only gonna tell their hedge fund guys to invest in the biggest and best stuff. So all that money, it's not going to be spread out like it is now amongst fucking what? What would you say? 5,036 projects? Nope. There's probably about only about, well, first of all, it has to have a working product. So there's only about 50 to 100 at the most of these blockchains that are actually doing anything. So like I said, if you're not actually doing something and you're a hedge fund, you're not allowed. So if I'm a hedge fund, I'm not allowed to invest in a white paper a test net, an ICO, any of that, you're not allowed. It has to actually be doing something because if my if my if if it fails and my my clients sue me, I have to be able to show to the judge, yeah, judge, I did due diligence. Yes, yeah, so it had a working product, uh, the CEO was doing this, this, it looked promising, yeah, it just didn't work. Yeah, many things don't work, you know. It just didn't work. But if you invest in something, you know, like a white paper and stuff, well fuck no, man, you're in trouble. And so that's why the money is going to go to the biggest and best stuff. And that's why I keep preaching to you guys, just get the biggest and best shit. Your V-Chain, your IOTA, your Singular Net, your Factums. All right? Fuck, put Chainlink up in that bitch too. Right? Those are going to fly. All those hundreds of billions are going to pump into those first. Yeah, because they're doing stuff. They're generating revenue and they're viable for the future. These hedge fund guys aren't stupid. All right, all right, let's move on. Oh, and so here he says, that's what we're talking about. That's why me have happened. Is that, he says, head fund demand is booming. So traditional head funds. All right, let me, let me have a sip. Let me have a sip on first. And this is from Bloomberg. So this isn't some crypto site. This is a Bloomberg where I live. This is a <laughs> where I live in the markets. Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, you know, real news. Find zero hedge in crypto sites. Look. So here comes your money, brothers. All in due time. All in due time. Now, traditional hedge funds, pensions, and endowments are boosting cryptocurrency holdings, according to the biggest Bitcoin trust provider. Grayscale Investments, which lets accredited investors own Bitcoin and other coins via its funds, wait, uh, sorry, sorry, said it took in 608 million last year, surpassing the total amount raised the previous six years. Yeesh. Exactly, that shows the boost. The majority of the inflows, about 71%, came from institutions like hedge funds up from 66% in 2018. In other words, that more hedge funds are coming in. More hedge funds are coming in. Grayscale's assets under management have increased to about $2 billion, just as a slew of rivals, most notably Mike Novogratz, that's our buddy Novogratz, <laughs> Galaxy Digital, and Nickel. Remember we read about Nickel? What was that, the other day? Uh, what was that we read about them? One second, one second. Nickel 
was the oh yeah yeah nickel is the first the first uh thing to use the crypto custody from fidelity in the uk remember that we read about fidelity oh, i told you fidelity is coming to get you europeans <laughs> oh yes the american behemoth cometh huge fidelity is like a v chain oh, just two monsters roaming around yes. fidelity just custodying and making funds and v chain just Rawr. <laughs> just onboarding everything on earth. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, brothers. Yes, get yourself a little morning fuel. Doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt. When you wake up in the morning, one day, just try this. I know your worker bees can't go, can't go to work all fucked up. But look, look, every once in a while, on a weekend, wake up and just have a little water and just bang, bang, bang. Just give yourself a little fuel. Just a little, just a little. I'm not saying like how I do it on the show. Just a little. Bang, bang, bang. And see how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It starts the day off right. It starts the day off right. All right. And then from now on, like when I'm done the show, like I'm not sitting around drinking like how I am when I'm talking to you guys, right? Obviously, I mean, I'd be fucking destroyed, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a small guy. But when you just have a couple of bang, 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 right at the beginning of your day, oh yeah, oh yeah, little suit, you know, little Johnny in accounting bothering you when you get to work, just tell me, yo, Johnny, go fuck yourself, get out of here. Oh yeah, <laughs> you have a different spirit when you're, <laughs> okay, I should, I should, I don't want you to lose your jobs. You need them right now. You're going to need them for a little bit, but don't worry, brothers. The rescue mission is on the way. Bang! The, the, the tsunami is on the way. Yes. We've we've notified rescue. The rescue mission is on the way. When, Shamari? Look! I don't know when. But they said they're coming and the ETA is imminent. Imminent. All right, guys. Grayscale Asset Management. <laughs> All right. Has increased uh, to about $2 billion. Just as a slew of rivals... Most notably, Mike Novogratz and Digital and, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Mike Novogratz Digi Galaxy Digital and Nickel launched similar investment vehicles. The companies provide exposure to coins like Bitcoin without forcing investors to hold the cryptocurrencies directly. Told you, people don't want this crypto. This fantasy that people want to own it and store it and put it on ledgers and cut and paste. No, you guys got to get over that. Anything that's involved in that kind of thing, any crypto company here that's involved in this mass adoption thing and that's what they are pinning their hopes on, that soccer mom and dad are going to eventually wake up one day and magically want to use crypto, those are all going to be failures. Tell you right now, tell you spectacular failures. But I thought everyone would want to use it. No, yeah, because you're a moron. <laughs> Why would they want to do that? I mean, like I said, unless there's discounts when you buy stuff. Like how Tron does it with the hotels. You give me 15% off a hotel. That's different. But yeah, spectacular failures. Just like the dot-com bubble. Google, hold on. I'm going to even Google it for you, man. Because I know you fucksticks don't Google shit when I tell you to Google stuff. Lazy ass motherfucker. So check this out. All right, we're just going to chat, chat. We're going to yap, yap. Watch this. Pets.com. Okay? This is the most famous. <laughs> oh, what what happened here? Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay, hold on. I Sorry, sorry, sorry. I see Why is it doing that? Oh, I see. Hold on. I want to show you this. Uh, what, what are we going to call it then? Um, dot, dot com bubble. Pets. Dot com. Watch this. Yeah, here it is. They, they even have a whole Wikipedia thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's pets.com. So this was huge, huge. Every, oh, this is going to be great. It's so fantastic. It was in all the newspapers, all the magazine, Time Magazine, Forbes, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, and they, what? It was on the NASDAQ even. And then what happened? What was their fate? Self-liquidation. <laughs> Self-liquidation. Yeah, they went defunct. What did I tell you? The dot-com bubble was... Was... Uh, was from 1992 to uh, the year 2000, right? These guys came out in 1998. They were huge, huge. Yeah, look at that. 
two years later, self-liquidated. Oh, yeah. They were the darlings. They were the darlings. Look at this. Look at that. Let me read a little bit. Pets.com was a, darl- was a dot-com enterprise headquartered in San Francisco that sold pet supplies to retail, retail customers. It began operations in November 1998 and liquidated in November 20, 2000. A high-profile marketing campaign. This was the biggest. It was going to be the best. Ripple, a high-profile marketing. Oh, yeah, a lot of marketing. But eventually, you have to actually do something. A high-profile. You have to actually register some banks. A high-profile marketing campaign gave it a widely recognized public presence, including an appearance in the 1999 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Okay? You know, if you're an American, you know what that is. If you're not American, on Thanksgiving Day... There's this huge parade in New York, and it's it's a, like a tradition. It's, I don't know, it's been going on for, I don't know, probably like 100 years or some shit like this. They were in the Thanksgiving Day Parade, and they even had an advertisement at the 2000 Super Bowl. Now, I don't know, understand, you know, I, if you're American, you understand the power of a Super Bowl commercial, right? The Super Bowl commercials are so special, you watch them because they only come on during the Super Bowl. Right, its popular sock puppet advertising mascot was interviewed by People Magazine and appeared on Good Morning America. Oh, yeah, and then what? Bang! They failed. (laughs) They fucking failed. And so, uh, why am I bringing that up? Just, just, I want you to remember this, guys. Just like the dot-com bubble. This was the darling. Here it is, pets.com. It was on the NASDAQ. Oh, yeah, people made a lot of money. But then, bang, it crashed. It crashed. And that's what, oh, spectacular failures. And that's what I want you to understand. And I don't want you, as my subscribers, to be caught in a spectacular failure. Oh, yes. Because a lot of worker bees, yap, yap, and they'll build an army and they'll do this and this. And they'll preach to you. Yeah, but they're worker bees. They don't know. Oh, hey, spectacular failure. Spectacular failure. That's pets.com. All right, so, but what, what the fuck? What are we talking about that for? Anyways, I hope you guys get that. All right? Oh, but it's so promising. It's so promising. You better choose wisely. You better choose wisely. Everyone thought they were choosing wisely with pets.com. It was the darling. I even remember it. Like, I can actually remember all the hype about it when I was a kid. Right? Failed. Failed. Okay? You have to pick stuff that's really going to work. And so that's why my emphasis is on stuff that's working now. All right, you're already working. All right, well, you can't fail because you're already working. All right, you've already onboarded major Fortune 500s and you're already generating revenue, right? All right. So think wisely. All right. What else we got here? What else we got? Yeah, man, I really, guys... And the reason I'm I'm sort of emphasizing all of these, you know, I don't know, just all this market stuff right now is because we're coming close, man. The the tsunami is really close. And I want to make sure you guys got everything you need. I want to make sure your portfolios are nice. Well, or at least that I helped you get it nice. I mean, it's up to you to do what you're going to do. It's your money. But at the end of this, if you meet me one day and you're like, yeah, man, I didn't make much money. I'm going to be like, well, that's your fault, fuckstick. I told you what to well, I didn't tell you what to get, but I mean, it, you should have figured it out what to buy. It's clear that we're experiencing being smart money. I mean, I've been telling you it for free. I mean, <laughs> you shouldn't be a broke motherfucker. So look, look, it's also, okay, let's get back to the institutional money though. Yes, here's our money. Here's our money. It's clear that we're experiencing institutional options, says Michael Sonnenschein, managing director at Grayscale. The asset class is experiencing increased validation from legal, sorry, sorry, all right, let me calm down, from legacy companies like Fidelity and CME, signaling to institutions and the investment community as a whole that crypto as an asset class is here to stay. Let's say that again. The asset class is experiencing increased validation as an asset class, okay? Not this soccer mom and dad buying buying coffee with it, but as an asset class, from legacy companies like Fidelity and CME. Yes, the big dogs. I told you why I came to this market. When I saw that CME had a Bitcoin futures, I was like, get the what? 
oh, this Bitcoin thing is real? That's what told me it was real. Yeah, you, I tell you right now, every hedge fund guy saw that. We're not stupid. We know what that means. And when you see it on the Bloomberg terminal, yeah, you, you know what that means. If you're a market person, you know what that means. It means here comes the real deal. You know, here comes the institutions and here comes, yeah, we're making a market out of this thing, <laughs> out of this asset class. Signaling institutions and investment community as a whole that crypto assets are here to stay. And that's what it did. That's why I got in the markets. Once I saw the real deal, not my friends yap yapping to me about Bitcoin. Right? Dumbass motherfuckers. But when I saw real boys that I'm used to playing around with, whoa, CME, Bloomberg Terminal people. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. And so... And that's what they need to hear. And that's what they're seeing. That's what the hedge fund guys, if they're not in tuned yet, if you're a hedge fund and you weren't into Bitcoin yet, when you see Fidelity offering custody, look up. You know what that means. You know what the fuck that means. This shit's for real. When you see CME offering futures and now they offered options, right? Their options just came out last week. As a market player, you know what that means. You know, as a market guy, we know what that means. Those are the big dogs. This shit's for real. You know what I mean? It's saying some kid with some green hair and a nose ring. So look, last year, Bitcoin's price almost doubled, outpacing traditional investments such as U.S. stocks and gold. Grayscale expanded its investor base by approximately 24%. Oh, yeah. 24% expansion. Inflow of money, the company said. And look, remember this. And this is what I want. I want you to think about this, too. This, like I said, here in America, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, they're the only things that are, reg are regulated right now. That's all that institutions can come get. But remember this. Once we have regulation, and I never want you to forget this, and that's why if you're new here, why is this guy always talking about the government? Look, fuckstick. Once we get regulation, <laughs> these guys are going to come here in droves, a flood. That's why I call it a tsunami of money is coming. A tsunami. They are only not here. Why aren't they coming? Because they don't have the regular. They're not allowed yet. Once they're allowed, make no mistake about it. You will be rich if you're investing in quality products. All right. So look, look. That was a lot of yap yap. Bye. Let's do this. Look, look. Stepping. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. Haven't seen you for a while. Look, look. Hurricane master. Look, look. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Son of a bitch, look at this. Look, 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 bye, look, bye, look, bye. Yeah. Love you, Ron Cash. Market killer. Look, look. Yes, Karen. All right, what'd she say? Karen said it right over here. Oh, she said it right here. Where's she at? Karen said, look, look. Just started my bag of iota. And she gave me a bang. Ooh, a full caps bang. She's excited. Look, look, as you should be. When you read shit like, bye. Third party people saying what you're invested in is going to be the standard. Not some fucking IOTA army on a Twitter, a bunch of worker bees on Twitter, but real analysts making reports about what you're invested in. Oh, you can rest assured. You can rest assured when the pros see the value of what you're invested in. Oh, you're good to go. You're good to go. Right? You are good to go. All right, Karen. Where's she at? Let's give her the bag. Where's she at? Look, look, Thomas family. Karen. Karen. Bye. Yes. Edward Ditko. Oh, Edward Ditko. Oh, he liked the uh, show yesterday. What did he put here? I have a mighty need. <laughs> what does that mean? What, to buy crypto? Well, all right. Let's go, brother. Oh, sorry. First of all, though. Edward and the Ditko family. Yes, with the wife. Love you guys. See you guys. Bang, yours. <laughs> the Ditko family. Look, look. The family that cryptos together stays together. <laughs> Bang, there we go. That's how you do it. Family that cryptos together stays together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, here's the suspects right here. Look, look. What do we got? DP. Look, look, soul brother. Love your brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yeah. X Nilo. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Outdoorsy guy. Bang. 
Robbie Hardaway, I love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, shit. Van Breeden. Yes, today is a day. Van Breeden. Oh, look, brothers. Look, look. Van Breeden. Michelle. My son. <laughs> My only son. All that I live for. All that is worth living for in my life. The light in my eyes. The joy in my heart. Yes, and you know what, brothers? The favorite. The fruit of my womb. <laughs> the fruit of the womb, brothers. The fruit of the womb. Michelle, you sit downstairs all the day. You sit downstairs on that damn computer. All I hear is bang downstairs. Michelle, your wife, she wonders where are you? Your friends, they want you to go do things, Michelle. They tell me that you tell them. Now is not the time. If it's not the time, Michelle, what are you doing? Michelle, what are you doing downstairs? Look, look. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, yeah, today Michelle's hardcore. But look, look, Michelle's got his two favorite cryptos doing shit, and he's got a bunch of hedge funds. Michelle's got bang, yes, bang, yes, and hedge funds, bang. Wait, where are they? I don't have hedge funds. Look, look, Michelle, what are you doing downstairs? Mama! Leave me, woman. You know nothing of these things. Mama, look. V-Chain is growing. More. <laughs> Fucking more. V-Chain is growing, mama. They have taken over the supply chains. Bye. They have taken over. What else have they taken over? They have taken over the electric cars and they are putting their things in cars, mama. They have onboarded multiple, mama, let me repeat myself, multiple Fortune 500 companies, mama. And now, mama, look. They are not satisfied, mama. Their thirst for power is insatiable, mama. Their drive for global dominance is unstoppable, mama. Mama, look, look. Now, VeChain is investing in the DeFi market, woman. That is the new market to get the financing, woman. Look, look, mama. You ask me what am I doing? IOTA. Mama, look. IOTA is to become a global standard, mama. I don't say so. The analysts say so, mama. Not me. Not the crypto. Not some fucking army on some fucking Twitter, mama. Excuse my language, Mama. You know I don't like to speak to you like such a way. Look, Mama, look. It will be the global standard. And look, Mama. I am invested in this space. And let me tell you, the Bitcoin hedge... Wait. The hedge funds are demanding it. They are crying for it, Mama. They are with the pitchforks and the torches and they say, We need crypto. We need crypto. We need crypto, Mama. They are banging on the doors, mama. Look, look, mama. You ask me what am I doing downstairs? Look, look, woman. I'm investing in the cryptocurrency. Now, leave me, woman. Bye. <laughs> look, look. That deserved a Van Breeden tonight. Look, look. Van Breeden. Bye. Bye. Van Breeden. Bye. Dag on right. B chain about to take over DeFi. Iota about to take over global standards. And dang on, here comes our money. You can't have a better Saturday than this, folks. You're welcome. Bang! Van Brienen! Bang! Oh, speaking of Van Brienen, that's funny. Let me say this story. One of the brothers today, he said he was at work and his Bluetooth, he was watching the show. 
and he said his Bluetooth headphones went out. Two guys did. So watch this, watch this, watch this. This guy said, he said, where was it? Where was that? He said, so this guy here, RB, he said, thought I had Bluetooth on when you banged. Nearly shook the bitches out around me out of their seats. <laughs> and this guy, well, just, uh, our buddy Edwin, our brother Edwin, he, he said that today, him as well, well, yesterday, I guess now, he was at work and his Bluetooth cut out on him right when, the, when, when we were at the Van Brienen part. And he said, <laughs> when the Bluetooth cut out, it went, Van Brienen! His phone, right? He yelled, Van Brienen! <laughs> you know, he's like, holy shit, turning down the volume. Right? He's a, he's a project manager. He's a real estate project manager. So I'm just assuming... Real estate offices are probably quite quiet, you know, just people kind of, you know, just doing what they do on their computers, the laptops, or I mean, on the computer terminals. And so I can just imagine a fucking uh, iPhone turned all the way up, just Van Breeden. Yeah, and he said everyone looked at him <laughs> like he was crazy. So that's funny. Two guys today got got exposed. Look, look, my sleeper cells. Don't expose yourselves yet. Now's not the time. It's not the time. Yes. We will rise in global domination when the time is right. Yes. Keep yourselves undercover. Look, look, don't let them know you're a killer bee quite yet. Now's not the time. Yes. Bide your time, brothers. Bide your time. Look, look, like ISIS, one day we will rise. Yeesh, that's probably a bad example. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. You know I don't like terrorists and shit, though. You're just cutting off heads and stuff. That's not very nice. Not very neighborly. All right, guys. <laughs> yeah, not very neighborly. Cutting off heads and stuff. So look. All right, what else we got? Radster, brother from Prague. Bye, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Pedium, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. All right, I think it's pretty much everyone. Stallion, she's on vacation. Maybe she's not watching these right now. She's over there in Cali on vacation. Look, look. She's from Colorado. All right. What's Binium talking about? Swiss real estate company closes a $134 million deal using blockchain. Great. Bye. All right. That's good enough. That's good enough. We have done enough for tonight. Bye for today. Let me get you back. Let's let's wrap it up and let's get you back. So, bye. Here I am. So, look, look, brothers. Look, let's get real. I know I, uh, you know, I joke and I laugh and I yell and scream on this channel and everything, but I hope you really are listening to the words I'm saying, right? Like I try to make it entertaining. I mean, let's get real, guys. I'm a forex trader. I just sit alone at my house all day. <laughs> so when I get to actually talk and ah, you know, it's very uh, healing to me, right? I actually get to interact. I mean, though I'm just staring at a camera. I can feel your, I imagine your reactions, you know? And so it feels like I'm actually speaking to people. <laughs> and so, look, look. That's why I'm getting hyper. But I hope that you actually are really actually listening to the words I'm saying, right? Like, I know some of you do. Like Stallion, she's always, yeah, yeah. She gets past all the bang, bang and look, look and the drinking part. And she gets down to the, you know, the meat of what I'm telling you guys, right? And I hope that's what a lot of you guys are doing. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, if I just sat here and read it and was like, all right, well, night, guys, that's boring. So I, bye, look, <laughs> yours. Let you feel the emotion of what I'm feeling. As a 20-year killer, when I read stuff like V-Chain to enter the DeFi market, and while I'm invested in V-Chain, well, that makes a motherfucker go, bye. <laughs> yeah, I was like, if that don't make you go bang, just, just go back to work, fuck stick. Just get out of the markets and go back to work, save your money. Look, so V-Chain to enter the billion-dollar DeFi market. That's the new thing. DeFi, 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 DeFi. Lately this year and at the end of last year, Q, Q, Q4 last year it started. Shit, we are on a rampage all of it. And we're only two weeks into this Two weeks into this, uh, this year already. So, wow. All right. So, like I said, yeah, no use case is safe. Here comes V-Chain, fuckstick. <laughs> no use case. We will eat your use case for lunch. <laughs> yeah, 
That's our V-Chain. Global domination. Oh, yeah. Wait, right, don't let that cute little sunny... Where, what does he look like? Hold on, let's go back there and look. <laughs> don't let this cute little fucker right here trick you. Oh, yeah. Where is this guy? This little nerd looking... Oh, don't let that cute nerd looking guy fool you. That's exactly what Bill Gates looked like when he was young. <laughs> A Caucasian version, obviously, not an Asian. But look, look, just smiling and happy. Oh, yeah. Just the kind of just the kind of guy you'd want. Oh, he's a good worker guy. Kind of guy you'd want your, your daughter to bring home. Oh, he's perfect. He'll provide for my daughter and her family. That guy right there, let me tell you. See this face right here? Don't let it fool you. That's the face of a killer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't let it fool you. That's a murderer. You are looking at a murderer right there. You got a use case? This motherfucker is going to destroy your use case, take it over, and launch his V-Chain doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like Bill Gates. Told you about Bill Gates. That's how Bill Gates looked when he was a kid. Oh, yeah, just my little nerd guy. Those glasses probably aren't even real. He just doesn't want to scare you, so he puts them on. <laughs> I'm being a dick. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, just a little fantasizing, you know. You know my imagination, brothers. I got a good imagination. Yeah, but that's what Bill Gates looked like, just like that. Oh, just a smiley, just a smiley, friendly guy who wants to, oh, I just want to help you with your services. Oh, nothing to see here. Just want to help you. Oh, yeah. No, he's out for world domination. Make no mistake about it, brothers. That fuck stick right there. What's his name? Sonny Lou. Oh, he's out for world domination. And thankfully for us who invested in it, if you are invested in it, which you should be, in my opinion, I don't tell you what to do with your money, but if you're not, well, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Oh, yeah, this smiley little face right here. I'm telling you, VeChain's going to be the Microsoft of the internet or a blockchain and this shit. And bang, IOTA's going to be the Apple. All right. So look, look, where we at? Well, who's I banging here? Oh, we went to Thomas family. Oh, we're done with this. Oh, we already did that. All right. Bang, yes. Bang, yes. Here we are. All right. Make no mistake about it. That's exactly what Bill Gates looked like. Just a smiley little, just a nice little boy. Nothing, nothing, you know, nothing to worry about. I'm just a nice guy trying to build a little software. Would you like a little? Yeah. But then over here. Yeah, it was crushing and destroying businesses all over. <laughs> crushing them. Anyone came out, anything against Microsoft, he'd just buy the company and then sell it in pieces. You know, like the guy from, uh, you ever seen the movie Wall Street, the original one? Right, he buys the airline company and breaks it apart. Yeah, Bill Gates would do that all the time. It's called creative destruction. Google the words creative destruction. Hold on, let me Google it for you because I know you fuck sticks are lazy. Creative destruction. Watch this. Creative. Yes. I'm going to give you guys some deep market shit. Creative destruction. Oh, there's a video game called it now. Hold on, hold on. That's not right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Uh, creative destruction. Wow, it's a video game. Hold on. Creative destruction definition. All right, hold on. That, that'll work. Definition, right. Creative destruction theory. Here it is. Yeah. Schumpeter describes creative destruction as the process of industrial mutation that incessantly revolutionizes the economic structure from within, incessantly destroying the old one and incessantly creating a new one. Yeah, that's what Bill Gates did. But he even just destroyed new ones, too. It's called creative destruction. <laughs> you know, there's a guy, his name is Mitt Romney. He, he ran for president here in America. His company, Bain Capital, would buy companies, break them apart, and sell them. Yeah, creative destruction. Uh, and so that's what, make no mistake about it, that's what this fuckstick right here is about to do. Oh, he's about to do a lot of creative destruction. Holy shit. Holy! He's about to launch 
a, a campaign of creative destruction. You'll see. You'll see. All right, guys. All right, all right. Let's get back. I know, I know. I'm yapping at you. You know, I love talking to you guys. I'll sit here for fucking five hours talking to you. All right, all right. Let's move on to Iota then. This V-Chain's too good. I, I can't handle it. I can't. Creative destruction. That's what that little nerd's going to be doing. Oh, a lot of creative destruction. Oh, really? You do authentication too? Bang! I'll just buy you out. That's the shit I, uh, uh, Microsoft would do. Oh, you're a little software company? Bang! We'll just buy you. <laughs> and then sell you. Creative destruction. Look, look! Which is how business works. It always happens like that. It's not like something special. But it is amazing because it's this crypto. And, well, it's even more amazing because... Well, for me anyway, because I'm invested in it, so I'm happy. Look, so I ordered to become a global standard. Uh, I told you guys that. Fujitsu and Microsoft said that back in 2018. Well, they're actually and working for it, working for that, and working to those ends. Um, that one semiconductor company said, yeah, we're putting IOTA in all our semiconductors. So anyone who uses the semiconductor chip in their device will be IOTA enabled. That's where it is. IOTA is down to the chip level. They don't give a fuck what device you want to make. As long as you put that chip in it, it's IOTA enabled, fuckstick. IOTA, global standard. A real standard. IOTA the standard. Fucking. You know that other one, which is definitely not going to be the standard. Look, IOTA the standard. So, I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, like I said, it's not IOTA talking about it. The web, you know, the, the corporation, it's not IOTA lovers talking about it. It's just just hardcore, cold-blooded analysts saying it. And we looked at the, uh, we saw the scientists, right? Scientists are looking at, or academic papers, sorry. So I shouldn't use the word scientist. That's a little misleading. Acad right? Academicians, academicians, you know, in, a, a, you, know, uh, you know, academic papers, People are starting to actually, you know, debate this thing. Like, oh, the tangle. Oh, where can we implement this? That's how things start, right? Is usually in universities and then they come out here to the real world, right? And so, IOTA, global standard. Here it comes. And then Bitcoin hedge funds, demand booming. Yeah, well, I mean, I told you. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Uh, institutions are just going to keep coming and coming and coming. Oh, at first it's just going to be a little trickle. Oh, yeah, but eventually, whoosh, a fucking tsunami is going to arrive. Whoosh. And when that wave hits, you want to be positioned correctly. Market positioning. That's what I've been teaching you. That's what we've been doing around here since day one. Positioning ourselves in the market for when that arrives. For when the event that we know that's going to occur arrives. Look, so that's it. Let's chill and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Bang, subscribe below, press the bell. You will get an automatic notification when I do the show. Look, look. This is Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamara Clark. Love talking money, love talking crypto. This is the favorite. Look, time. Look, of my day. Oh, yeah. Helping people make millions? Who wouldn't like that? Shit. Especially watching our millions come. Yes, reading about it every day as, they, as it slowly comes together. Love it. So look, look, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you for having me in your home, and I will see you on Tuesday. So look, look, subscribe to that little bell right there. Watch this little video right here, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. So look, look, my name is Shamar Clark. I'm always on duty, always watching our money, always preparing us, positioning us for the riches to come. Subscribe below, watch the video. See you guys next week. Bye, Shamar Clark. Yes. Over and out.